Hey family, how are you feeling? This is Basics. Welcome again to uh, our series um, that we've designed uh, to help uh, those of you that are just beginning your walk with Christ to get started. We wanted to go, go through a series of lessons that we felt were the basic principles, the basic tools that you would need to actually grow, produce, as well as uh, walk in this journey of faith. Um, so BASIC stands for Believers Advancing Systematically into Christian Service. Now, if you're coming into this particular point right now, and this is your first video, uh, second video of some sort, I need you to go back and check Series 101 before you go into Series 201 and um, check out the ones that are before this particular video. But again, I thank God for all of you. appreciate you so very, very much for being present and being here. Um, Today, we're going to be discussing salvation, okay? Strengthening your walk with God. Strengthening your walk with God. Um, now, how does salvation actually affect our lives? Um, there's a very, very important lesson that I need you to grasp a hold of and get this. One of the most significant factors in a person's conversion experience is learning how to approach living this new life in Christ. The world in which we live out our faith is hostile to the ways of the gospel. Um, in this lesson, watch this, you will learn some key elements to strengthen your walk with Christ. No, in salvation, 101, which you have you not if you have not seen that, you need to go back and check it out. But in Salvation 101, we used a funnel to illustrate the approach uh, the enemy of God takes with our lives, um, as well as how the Bible describes the actual journey. Uh, you'll recall that salvation is not something we can earn. Salvation is not something that we can earn. Although this is true, we are responsible for how we live our lives once we have accepted God's redemption. Listen to this. In order for us to live victoriously or victorious lives in Christ, we must desire growth in our walks. Again, as I stated earlier, this is actually a journey. This is actually a walk. This is a period of time that you're taking on life and you're moving closer through the matriculation of what life shall bring as you get closer and closer to the Lord. I want you to consider 1 Peter, the second chapter, verse, um, verse number two. The Bible says, as newborn babes desire pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. This passage, in other words, tells us that we are to crave spiritual milk. That means we should really desire the things of God in our lives. To crave something, uh, we, must, we must have tasted it before, right? Um, and when we tasted it, we must have liked it before, right? Uh, Hey, mommy, Mikey, you know, hey, Mikey, he likes it. You know, remember the old commercial? Okay, I'm telling my age. Our salvation experience should do, to, do that in our own lives. We have experienced such a sense of the presence of God that we desire that the experience um, every day, we desire that every day of our lives. We want it. We look for it. We we long for it. It is it is an incredible privilege to have the opportunity to know Christ. It's a privilege, y'all. you taking on this walk. When you take on this journey, you're taking on the privilege. It is incredible, y'all. Now, particularly to be able to have this growing relationship with the creator of the whole universe and world. I mean, let's take a closer look at our walk. Um, on any given freeway, wherever you live, you will pass what's called mile markers. And that will let you know that you are on the road 
that you're traveling, right? If your car breaks down, if there is an accident, if you want to see how far you actually have come, the mile markers give you a way to actually see where you are. Y'all walking with me? I mean, the Christian faith has mile markers, right? They points where we can look back on and see how it is that it can help us in our journey with the Lord. They are there. They're character building events that has occurred in our lives. Character event, char character building events that has increased our faith. There are times we know the Lord has spoken to us or done something special in our lives. See, those events determine where our faith is actually today. God then provides these mile markers to help us in our salvation experience. Now, without mile markers that is within our walk of faith, we can lose sight of great things that God has actually done for us. It's David who stayed, uh, stated, um, 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 when I look back over my life and I think things over, um, you start to see some things. Uh, without those mile markers, um, um, our walk of faith, we can lose sight. So it's important to have times in our lives that you can look back on and draw strength when you seem to be struggling down the road of life. Watch this. If we establish these mile markers and if we put these mile markers of faith in place, our salvation experience will never be in an event of the past that meant nothing to us, but it will, it will maintain its power even in our present moment of today. Um, um, all in all, I want y'all to hear me. Mile markers help keep our salvation experience and our walk with Christ very fresh, very new, very significant. Let me give you some scriptural support for our strengthening that will help you strengthen your walk. The Bible um, is um, a great example uh, for us um, in our in our in our salvation experience, that we can grow into certain things. As you pursue a biblical approach to living out your salvation, uh, there will be some disciplines, right? Certain disciplines that 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 you need to engraft within your walk uh, that you have to implement into your life. Your salvation experience is intended to move you on to a to to growing. Um, in your walk with Christ. Now, just as babies grow and learn from crawling to walking, so does the person who has accepted Christ. Must allow yourself to be able to grow, to learn to crawl, then to learn to walk. A growth process must act, must take place. It has to take place. But however, the growth in your walk with Christ is left up to your own desire and your own pursuit of God. Now, the following will help you greatly in the growth process um, if implemented immediately. Now, catch this. Number one, cultivating a desire for God. Man, cultivate that desire. Nurture that desire. Understand he loves you so much. Know that you are his and he is unto you. Number two, faithfully attending a Bible practicing church. Oh, got to hear this. You got to get at a place and be at a place where you find yourself growing. I'm glad those of you that are watching this and you're part of unity. I'm thankful that you chose unity. I firmly and unequivocally uh, try my best to teach and be the profound church and leader uh, that you as a person may need in your journey towards faith. Um, surround yourself, yourself with a community of positive role models, right? Get some people around you that's going to really help uh, sustain, um, help um, hold up 
uh, the standard of what it is that you've accepted by way in Christ, right? Then wholeheartedly engaging in the discipleship process. You being on and watching this and walking through this and doing this is a very, very significant um, um, effort. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Um, um, if in your Christian journey, you decide the path on which you actually will walk, your salvation experience can be as strong as you wish, or it can become a past experience, which you allow it to become just another event that happened, which no longer has any impact on your daily life. Come on, think about the time when you accepted Christ, the drive, the hunger, the passion, the days that you were not allowed to go by without you reading the Bible. I mean, it's very, very significant. Salvation, y'all, is a life-changing encounter with God. You got to understand that. If you have not had that kind of encounter, you would, you would benefit greatly by pursuing a fresh new encounter with the Lord. Let's apply the salvation to your daily life. I'll give you some biblical examples. Uh, so to accomplish these things, we just that we just discussed, the things that we just went over, to get to those things, it's important to understand what the Bible says about our journey with Christ. In Romans, the seventh chapter, verses 14 through 25, Paul presents a very, very real analogy to, to a life in this world. This is what he says. He says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sowed under sin. For what I am doing, I don't understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate that's what I end up doing. He says, if then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I can't find it, right? For the good that I would do, do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that's what I end up practicing. Now, if I, do what I will not to do is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me. The one who wills to do good. For I, for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Paul then says, O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the Lord of uh, the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Oh, man. He points out that there is a law of sin at work in us. He also points out that there is a desire in every man to do things. Yeah, you know, come on, y'all. We desire to do certain things we're not supposed to do. And it's a battle that takes place. It's a war that takes place in our lives 
that, that each of us must continue to face. Paul was a man of God, yet he himself had challenges of keeping his salvation experience a part of his daily life. Do, do, do you find yourself facing the same struggle that Paul had to face? I mean, generally speaking, catch this. What sins do you see people struggle with the most? Are there things that you do that you know displeases the almighty God? Who does this passage indicate is the only one who can help deal with our sin? I'm sure you realize by now that you cannot accomplish the things that God desires for us on our own. We can't, right? Um, it is by the grace of God, demonstrated by his love for each of us, that we can have the privilege of living the lives, living our lives for God. Now, you should never take for granted the opportunity that's been afforded to you. Now, although it's difficult at times to live out our faith and we have the, the presence of God in our lives to help us in those difficult moments and those difficult times, whatever you do, listen to me, don't you dare give up on God, right? Let's put this into action. In order for your salvation experience to be more than, than an act of just forgiveness, there must be a standard for you to use as you put your salvation experience into your daily practice. Walk with me. Living by that standard, catch this, living by that standard daily is the purpose of Christianity. We are to be like Christ and to imitate his ways. So as you draw closer to God, your salvation experience becomes more meaningful. And the moment you invite Christ into your life, your journey actually then begins. And that journey is this, to live a life pleasing to God. In order for each of us to be able to live a life that's pleasing to God, there must be an example that we can follow. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse number one, tells us, uh, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Right. There's a big difference between being an imitator of God um, and being an imitator for God. Being an imitator of God and being an imitator for God. If you truly want to become like Christ, you must understand his ways. You must study the word of God and determine the model or how to model your life after Christ from the inside out. OK. Uh, you are you you are to be interested in what God does for you in your heart, so that what you do will not be performance, but it'll be a true response to what is in your heart and what is in your mind. As you see this happening, you'll you'll know that you're growing in this discipleship process. You'll find yourself matriculating. You'll find yourself moving. you find yourself becoming. And, and if your intention for God is just to be an imitator for him, you will soon find out that the performance of Christianity is too draining. You will not be able to perform long what is truly not in your heart. The Bible teaches us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It is God's desire that each of us have salvation experience that moves us closer and closer and closer to him. Whether you, uh, whether whether or not you take the steps to ensure a deeper walk with, uh, with God, it's entirely up to, you, up to you. Man, you got free will. It's your choice. Are you willing to listen to the voice of God and to those who are over you in the Lord. Listen, listen to the ones who are speaking to you. The disciples had to be taught and their eagerness for God did not mean they didn't have to listen to solid teaching and grow from their mistakes. Listen to solid teaching. Their hunger for more of God allowed them to grow in a more powerful relationship that God used mightily. That growth process in their lives allowed them to be used of God in a dramatic way. 
Their obedience to the Father led to many of them being used to write many books of the Bible. Let me tell you something. Your salvation experience can lead to a relationship that will allow the Lord to use you in a greater way than you would ever think was possible. As you pursue the relationship with God that takes on the very character of God, you'll find yourself being very pleased with your life. And that peace will lead to a life that is fulfilling. You hear me? Make a determined effort to go after God with the intensity that you have never demonstrated before. God's word promises a life with Christ if you seek him out. So that brings us to our assignments. Salvation 201 assignments are this. Read Romans 7, uh, verses 14 through 25. And then I want you to write at least one page paper on some of the mile markers in your Christian journey. Take a look back. What brought you to your place of faith? What brought you on this journey to where you are right now? Memorize the following verses, 1 Peter, 2 chapter, verse 2 and 3, and also Exodus 15, verse 2. Complete sermon notes for one church service that you attend. Pray 15 minutes a day. Read the Bible 15 minutes per day. Listen, y'all, this has been great. It's been amazing. Hefty information, a lot that you can really chew on. But I'm so grateful for your decision to accept the Lord and Savior as your, your, your God and your Savior. Thank you for uh, walking this walk and walking this journey. I salute you already. Keep going. Man, you're growing already, believe it or not. So keep on watching the videos, be consistent, be committed. Now, I want you to listen. If this has been a blessing to you and this has really helped you and this has caused you to grow and has caused you to be uh, come stronger, um, I want you to take our time. I want you to sow. I want you to give. Um, here's an opportunity for you to give. Why are you asking this? Because um, every time you sow and you sacrifice a seed, it's, it's you um, planting something in the ground that will bring a harvest back to you. I guarantee you, your faithfulness, your commitment to giving and every opportunity that you have been afforded to give, I guarantee you, God will supply unto you all that you will need. Trust me in that. Um, I thank you in advance. Your gifts, your seeds helps what it is that we do to produce this to continue to happen. So let's be faithful. Let's give, let's sow. And I'm grateful for you. Appreciate you tremendously. Thank you for being a part of Basics. This has been Basics. 201, talking about salvation. Um, if you have not, uh, check out the others. Make sure you do so. But I appreciate you. I'm Bishop Johnny Withers. This is Basics, believers advancing systematically into Christian service. I see y'all. Peace. <laughs>